so guys, after a few hours of waiting, after uh, a few hours of delay, we're finally boarding. We're about to leave from Davao, Manila. So thank you so much to everyone who joined us uh, for our talks there. Uh, here's a quick video of uh, a Facebook Live uh, that I did while waiting for the flight. Actually, before that, we talked a lot about certain stuff, some philosophy, some of my techniques as well uh, in trading and investing. But above and beyond that, we also talked about Bitcoin, we also talked about uh, some snippets of how you can actually trade and invest and also uh, buy and sell stocks as well, given certain uh, events of the market. So, enjoy this Facebook Live. I haven't done a lot of Facebook Live uh, sessions lately, but I hope that it's something that helps you and it's something that will be closer to your dreams of financial freedom as well. So, thanks so much and have a great day. Hey guys, so I'm waiting for my flight to board. I think uh, the flight will be delayed. Uh, I don't know how long will it take. How, I don't know also how uh, long will I be here in the airport. But as promised, Kalina, I did a Facebook Live uh, after my talk in Davao. So I'm still here in the airport. I'm waiting. I don't know what to do. Uh, I don't know yet. So I'm just going to use this time. If you guys have any questions, send them. Uh, comment below and I'll try to answer them. Uh, whatever investing or stocks or business entrepreneurship or uh, anything else that you want to know I just like to I don't know just use this time also to be productive but not just be productive but uh, but also add value to you add content to you guys so that uh, I don't know sabay sabay tayo dito on our road towards financial freedom and how we get to do things right so ayan na online si Ninong Randall Chongson uh, yeah, actually, siya yung mayaman guys eh. Search si Randall Chongson. Sobrang yaman. Super yaman. Uh, tip on how you can get rich. Get a very rich ninong so that he gives you amazing gifts. That's why Randall Chongson is my ninong. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you have Vance Gomez. Good evening to you. And I don't know, biglang, all of a sudden, you know, I've, I've had the liking to do Facebook Live more. I haven't done this in quite some time. So it's just nice to, to do it again. Uh, when I, whenever I do those YouTube videos, uh, it's scanned. It's already uh, edited, so wala na masyadong interaction. What I love about this is uh, it's just raw and no edits and it gets to... I, I just, I don't know, we just get to communicate as well, like what we've done uh, several times before. So, interesting, interesting. Uh, you have Vance Gomez asking on my inside on the third telco. So, as of now, no, uh, I don't know if you don't know my style when it comes to investing. Uh, I really don't speculate, I really don't guess. I really base things on what the numbers are saying, meaning uh, until something gets disclosed as a, uh, I don't know, until something gets disclosed on who will actually be the third player, everything is just speculation, everything is just, uh, it can be now, it can be ECP, it can be PTT, it can be whatever company that's there. So if, you're, if your game, if your battle plan is just to trade, then, then better not speculate but just use the charts, better use technical analysis so you get to, uh, I don't know, just decide properly on how to go about it. And another thing about the third telco, no? the third telco will be good for uh, consumers, it will be good for end users but it won't be good for the third telco player itself why please remember this they need to have a large war chest that because over the next few years they will be bleeding money pa para lang just to just to make everything afloat they will spend a lot of money just for them to be able to turn those investments around just for them you have to understand uh, mahal lang telco you'll spend a lot of money when you build those telco players you'll spend a lot of money when you uh, when you um, create, build, and build the infrastructure for it. The largest, the largest expense it, when it comes to uh, 
when it comes to telecoms is the infrastructure behind it. So para mabawi nila yun, it will take years. And here's the thing, I really believe in the cost of switching, meaning existing Globe and PLDT users, uh, what, if I'm Globe and PLDT, pag nagkatulit player, what they'll do is just they'll lower the prices, make it harder for the competition to actually get new clients because they have the existing platform ready, they have the existing infrastructure ready. So what, what's going to happen there is it will be hard for uh, the new entry to actually make money. But can you still make money off a trade? Of course, it can be done, it can be done, it can be done, it can be done as well. So uh, that's that's how money is made also in the market as well. So next, uh, sabi ni Randall Chongson, guapo pa rin daw kahit walang edit. Grabe naman, grabe. Uh, you have, sino to? Elva e e Valdemetra. Uh, sa tinatanong niya, may pag-asa pa ba ang CHP and FGN? Here's the thing, in stocks, lahat may pag-asa. However, uh, whatever movement that you will see should be dictated by fundamentals and technicals. Uh, for FGN and CHP, I'm not a fan of their fundamentals. Uh, CHP's income is, is not increasing, it's not growing. Their industry actually is also not as robust as what uh, everyone is thinking it's supposed to be. FGN also, its earnings is not attractive for me. I'd rather put my money on companies where I know the income is very, very predictable. Uh, both these stocks from a trend perspective are very very bearish so uh, Eval de Metara I'm not a big fan of those two companies as of this point in time then you have Loresa Ma sabi niya see you in September yes see you September event is Stock Smarts Manila so I hope to see you there I hope to see you there and uh, you have Daffodil Mirabueno hello to you as well please comment no, from what city are you in para at least I, I know also and I can greet you from where you're happening and where you're based. You have Luis Delin, thumbs up Dao. You have Jo Marie. And at what, at what, she's asking at what price is Jollibee good to buy? I think that's the context of uh, your question. No. Uh, essentially, here's the thing. Jollibee is still, uh, from, a, from a fundamental perspective, no, it's a good company. It's a good company that's growing, but my only issue with Jollibee is uh, number one, it's overvalued still. Please remember this: Jollibee has dropped from 300 to around 240 plus. In spite of it dropping, based on fundamentals, it's still not cheap. There's a difference from a stock that has dropped from a stock that uh, has dropped and it's cheap already. So Jollibee, from this point in time, from this narrative, no, it's still not cheap, and I'm not a big fan of it yet. However, from a trend perspective, naman, the stock is still also bearish. So, if you're a trend follower, uh, it really hasn't shown signs of reversal yet. It hasn't shown signs that it has reversed from it going down to something that's moving up. It needs to break several resistances for it uh, to actually move up. So, uh, what we're seeing now from the charts now is that at 245 pesos per share, uh, Jollibee has developed some sort of a short-term support, but the internal trend is still relatively strong going down. So, here's the thing. If 245 does not hold, a possible short-term movement downward for Jollibee will be around 238 pesos per share, and it will further confirm uh, the downward movement of the stock. So, I hope I answered your question Jomari. Now you have Miguel who says Miguel Mores. Is my ABS-CBN investment doomed? Uh, here's the thing. Number one, uh, ABS-CBN fundamentally you know, income is uh, relatively moving up. In terms of income, uh, the income of ABS-CBN is more attractive than uh, the GME7. The only problem that I have with uh, the only problem that I have with ABS-CBN is that uh, its chart no, is still pretty much bearish. Uh, <laughs> it has dropped from 50 to around 21 plus. So if it has dropped from 50 to 21 plus, plus the more support, it, for those especially who have attended their stock smart sessions, no, the more support levels it breaks, the more bearish it is. And that's what's happening to Jollibee. Support upon support upon support is going down. And it's, it just keeps getting broken and the downtrend is pretty much uh, strong still so for those who are trend followers like me uh, don't buy it while it's a downtrend because we won't we don't know how long will it will it stay in that downtrend there have been so so many stocks that have been in downtrend for years uh, Del Monte you have your uh, SSIs you have your surpasses uh, you have your FJs you have your CHPs some stocks will remain in downtrends and will continue go, to go down until something shifts, until something changes as well. So uh, that's it. I hope I answered your questions. I, I hope I answered your question, Miguel Morris. 
Hendrix Bongalon skincare <laughs> ask me anything wag naman skincare wala naman ako alam sa skincare uh, hindi ako pang hindi ako pang skincare products so uh, I don't know if I can help you there uh, si Watu si Gabriel sabi niya hello uh, Louis Louis Delin DMW Sir Marvin uh, DMW from uh Fundamentally, no? Fundamentally. Uh, it, it's a property development company at the end of the day. That's just basically it. So, the question is there. Do you think DMW is better up against, head-to-head -head up against R RLC? Is, do you think DMW is better up against Ali? Do you think DMW is better up against uh, Mega World? Up against uh, Vistaland? Those that have pronounced business models already. Uh, if you think it's better, check the numbers, check the fundamentals, check uh, how, how the income is growing. The problem with DM, uh, DMW right now is it's pretty much uh, bearish. Eh? It came at the wrong time. It came at a time when the market is dropping and uh, from 12 pesos, no, it's down already to almost 8 pesos. I think it's around 8.8 .8, so you have around 25% losses already. It came at a uh, relatively bad time to do the IPO. So now here's the thing. For those who really are bullish in DMW, for those who believe in the company, for those who believe uh, that DMW BMW will relatively do well. This can be an opportunity for you to come in. This can be an opportunity for you to uh, buy and attach and add more to the stock as well. If you believe in it and if you think it will actually uh, grow and move up. But if you're like me, you're a trend follower, uh, wait for the trend to develop and wait for it actually to develop a good support rates so once it starts to bounce. You can put in, I guess, a 20-day moving average as some sort of a breakout signal for you should you see the stock starts to move in and up. All right. So, uh, Gerard Salazar is asking, about SSI Gerard, I posted a video about it. No, uh, for for those who are new to this Facebook Live uh, series, I've been doing Facebook Live before, but uh, natigil lang ever since. Again, I've been doing more uh, more YouTube videos as well. But uh, Gerard Salazar, um, I posted a video about SSI and its connection to Shake Shack. It's in my YouTube page, so I'll try to put the comment below on on where it is so that you get to see it as well. But from a trend perspective, SSI is also bearish. All right. Next, uh, you have Vener Danoso asking for Mac, Francis Gomez asking for Now, uh, Roland Tiu uh, asking how you can invest in the stock market. Simple lang, just open a brokerage. I've created some videos also that if you're new to the market, uh, it's also in YouTube on how you can actually uh, uh, open a brokerage account as well. So, uh, let's look at Francis Gomez's question about Now. No? Uh, now, basically, by the way, uh, I'm using... I'm using this chart soft, charting software because it allows me to uh, view my US, Singapore, and Philippine stocks in one go. For those looking at now, uh, it's relatively sideways ready. It's relatively uh, flat as well. If you want to see now have a very, very good movement, it must break out from the 10 peso level. I think the 10 peso level will give now a shot to go to 12 pesos per share. So now it's just really either a move. If you're trading now, it's just really buy from support or you just wait for the breakout at 10. However, uh, I think there's a support at around 9 and around 8.3. If 9 or 8.3 does not hold, you can possibly expect now to actually retrace downward and just go lower again. So, uh, again, technique for this now, don't base everything on emotions. Base everything on what the chart is actually telling you and what it is actually uh, saying as well. <laughs> I miss it on Facebook Live. I haven't really done this in a while and I think I should do more. Comment below if you want me to do more Facebook Lives or you want me to do uh, more YouTube videos. However, kaya ko nagagawa kasi delayed yung flight ko. So, since delayed yung flight, it, has, it gives me the opportunity to do uh, stuff like this which I normally don't get to do uh, on, a, on a normal basis as well. So, uh, what else? Uh, MC Yen is asking for uh, IMI. Aurora sabi niya, looking good Sir Marvin. Ay, looking great, pa, looking great, looking great. Uh, let's look at IMI. Uh -huh. IMI. By the way, no, this video also will be posted in YouTube. So uh, please subscribe to my YouTube page. Uh, I've, I've, I know all of you guys love Facebook more, but 
uh, I don't know, I think YouTube is also the future. Everything is headed to uh, YouTube, so uh, every content will be there, will be uploaded there as well. I am I, from a trend perspective, from a range perspective, is bearish. Uh, I am I, if you're quick and even a position trader, uh, stay away first. Uh, the trend is pretty much down, the trend is pretty much bearish, the, the trend is pretty much moving lower. It just broke down from 13.4 uh, pesos per share, and because of that, I think a downward target will possibly bring it to uh, 11.5 pesos per share. So, underlying trend is down, uh, the, the trend is still headed down, and because of the breakdown, it could possibly go back down to 11.5 pesos per share. Uh, you have Edson Mendoza, okay, ayaw ni now gusto frequency lang. Yeah, totoo yun. Um, it's very, very expensive. Um, like it's um, the third telco is a the infrastructure to build it will cost them a lot of money. So if they go for the frequency, I, I think it might be even better for them as well. So water break, water break. Alam naman live, eh. so pag live, kailangan I, I don't have the opportunity to cut and do other stuff. By the way. <laughs> I'm in Davao now. Uh, for those who are asking, you know, I'll be doing stock smarts here. I think uh, second week of November. I'll put the link below for those who want to know more about it as well. <coughs> Ton Santos, sir, mukhang humahataw si web. Let's check out web. Let's check out web. Mm. <coughs> web, web naman. Uh, if you've noticed web, no? It got battered down because of uh, the issues that it had with the government. Uh, but one thing to consider for web is this. Uh, you have a support at around 5 pesos per share. And you have a possible short-term resistance at 5.5. And another resistance at around uh, 6 pesos per share. So here's the thing. Uh, web yesterday broke out. Uh, today uh, retraced lower. Let me check what time it is. July 20. Yeah, today 3-3 three, three slower, but here's the thing, here's the play for web. If it stays above 5.5, uh, there's a possibility, there's a shot that it goes to 6 uh, because of the breakout from 5.5. But if it fails to hold 5, uh, the possible landing spot for web will go back to around 5 pesos per share. So uh, that's the, I don't know, that's the uh, underlying conditions for web that it's highly dependent on the movements of of the volatility already. So for web, technical sa talaga to 5.5 stays above 5.5 it can go to 6 break out from 6 will bring it to 6.8 but if 5.5 does not hold it will go back to around 5 pesos per share my mommy is also tuned in hello to you then you have john lee philip sanchez shout out to you from ormoc city late john lee i'll be there in tacloban by the end of august naman. so tacloban is close to my heart so i hope to see you then you have timothy chua uh, asking for idc idc let's see let's see let's see idc 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 short term uh IDC is a short-term support at around uh, 5 pesos per share. Uh, what you're seeing now is, the movement that you're seeing now is a bounce from 5 and a breakout from 5.25. Because of the breakout from 5.25, possible target price is around 5.5 and 5.9. So, uh, the, play for, the play for IDC, if 5.25 does not go, that's cool. Target price is 5.5. If 5.5 breaks out further, target is 6. So, progression, 5.25. 5.25 does not hold, it goes down to 5 again, goes back to 5 again. 5.20 breaks out from 5.25, target is 5.5, breakout from 5, next target is 5.91. Guys, naman, this this session is about ano, ask me anything, pero para naging stocks by request. I want naman interesting questions also, not just about uh, stock picks. Kasi, uh, please remember this that if you rely on stock picks, uh, <laughs> It's okay, but it doesn't build conviction. What will help you make money in the markets is you're doing something with conviction. You're doing something na buo yung loob nyo. You're doing something that you know and you know and you know based on the fundamentals and the technicals. You can buy it on your own. And that's where money is made that you don't have to rely on me. If you rely on me, I think I've failed you because my goal is not just to give you fish. Eh? My goal is to teach you how to fish. That if you, if you learn how to fish, you will never go hungry again. And I, 
I hope that what's, that's what you get, eh, that you learn to decide on your own. I hope that these videos uh, like this no, uh, just acts as some sort of a guide. It's some sort of a reference point, but you do your own due diligence because uh, that's how money is made in the market. So next, we have Camilo Cos. What's happening to MPI? MPI is pretty much, uh, it's pretty much battered down. It's still pretty much in a downtrend. So here's the thing. This is where the technicals deviate from the fundamentals. Why? Because at this point in time, MPI is super cheap. MPI is a cheap company that has great valuations, that is growing, increasing, that's part of our growing economy. However, from a trend perspective, MPI is bearish. So why, why am I saying this? Quick traders avoid MPI. Position traders avoid MPI as well. But investors who have longer horizons, uh, MPI is a good area for you ready to start to position ready since it's at this point in time it's cheap and at this point in time nothing has really changed in its fundamentals mpi is a solid fundamental company which will do well not just now but will do repeatedly well for the long term now i hope i answered your question any insights on str uh, whose question was that str is from edson mendoza edson mendoza let's see str STR, no, uh, since July, relatively flat. From a longer perspective, though, bearish. I'm not gonna trade it until it breaks out of. There's resistances, no, for STR is 11.2 and 12.8. I repeat, resistance, strong resistance for STR is 11.2 and 12.8. Uh, Short-term resistance for it is around 8.8. So here's here's a battle plan for quick traders. If it stays above 7.2, which is where a moving average is, uh, bounce from 7.2, target price is 8.8 for just a short-term trade. All right, so I hope you're getting stuff from this. I'm excited now because in uh, YouTube, I'm not going to be able to make interactive videos like this. And it's nice to get to uh, talk to you guys as well. Roland, do you have any applied stocks? Open a broker. Open an online broker. Uh, go to YouTube. I, I, I posted this in my YouTube about online trading and the basics of online trading. Uh, you can look at the, at the steps there and how you can uh, open stocks as well, or you can open a market. Or for those of you guys who are uh, into the market as well, uh, na tayo on how it can do it. That's uh, what what I want, and that's what that, I don't know if you notice this. Um, every time I create videos, it's always I don't know optimistic. I never say anything bad about uh, the, the market or uh, the Philippines in general. Even though there's so much negative stuff, my goal is to uh, show what's good. Day. In, in a world where everyone wants to talk about what's bad, I want to show what's good because there's so much negative things and it's time that there's there's someone. There, the reason why I do these videos as well is that uh, so that people see that there's still so much good in the Philippines, that uh, there's so much optimism, that there's so much hope that you can prosper in the Philippines, that it can be done, that uh, wherever you are, there's still a possibility for you to uh, have a possibility of earnings. Eh? And please, please remember this. Don't let your, your background, don't let your education define who you are. It doesn't matter if you did not come from a rich family. It doesn't matter. It's what you do with today that will determine uh, your profitability in the future. It's what you do with today that will determine how financially free you will be. If your friends are pulling you, stay away from them. If the, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with, if your five friends are not bringing you close to financial freedom, find, friend, find friends who will push you towards the right direction because that's how it is. Uh, you need to surround yourself with the right people, with the right mindset as well. Uh, jo job break at Unga. Last year, the last year at our CHP. Ah, CHP not so much. Uh, CHP has been in a downturn as well. Uh, dun sa mga dun sa mga listed natin, we only have three. Uh, we only have three listed companies that are in the cement industry. Holcim is in a downtrend, and your problem in Holcim, its income started to drop as well. So uh, fundamentally, it's not as attractive anymore. So dapat when you see areas like that, fundamentally speaking, it should be a sell. Uh, please remember this: whenever fundamentals dictates that it's not favorable anymore, similar to what's happening to Holcim, it's a sell. Regardless if it's a take profit or a cut loss, similar also to Semex. Uh, the only one that's relatively better is Eagle Cement. 
Next, uh, you have Rainier Fontanilla asking for uh, TBGI. Then Emerson Almeda asking for Tuloy Taiwan. Oh, naman, Tuloy Taiwan. Uh, Taiwan will be uh, when is this? November. I think it will be November. I, November 2, I think. Instead of the weekend of the first, either the last Saturday of October or it's the first Saturday of November. So somewhere there, yung uh, All Saints Day na long weekend holiday. So, tuloy na tuloy yan. Please comment below. Give me your email so we can uh, alert you on the Taiwan seminar as well. So, let's talk about TBGI naman. Uh, Trans-Pacific Broadband. TBGI, uh, what's causing it to move up is the breakout from uh, point 0.45. The breakout from point 0.45 is what's causing uh, the movements upward. The breakout from point 0.45 is what's causing uh, whatever movement that you're seeing. So now, here's a prevailing theme. As long as it stays above that level, uh, that now becomes its new support level, as long as it stays above that, or even you can peg it na point 0.48, eh. uh, if TBGI stays above point 0.48, the upward movement will still be there, and it could possibly challenge the next resistance, which is around 0.65. So, 0.48. If it says about 0.48, targets will be around 0.65 over the short term as well. Roland Chu, who's from Dubai, hello to you. What a break. Um, Timothy Chu, I've mentioned about IDC already. Uh, I, I see a lot of people posting um, specific stocks, so let me check for people who are not asking for specific stocks and then we'll go through it one by one as well. Okay, let's check, let's check, let's check. Marites from Iloilo. Uh, Elisa C asking for Vita. Makavian asking, aside from insights, yung iti ni Kuya, yung kailangan ko para malinaw ang technical analysis. <laughs> Sobra naman. Uh, then you have Andy Fiesta Bloom asking for Bloom. Michael Alcalde, sir, may online seminar ba kayo for technical and fundamental analysis? Uh, I'm not sure when will it be done, probably later in the future because uh, the, I like the live seminars more, the classroom seminars because face-to-face uh, -face interaction, it's more personal and uh, iba pa rin yung learning ng classroom setting probably later in the future and I'm still enjoying also uh, meeting different people. Siguro when uh, seasons in my life will change that I need to stay more in Manila already, probably that's when I'll do the online seminar but as of this point in time, no schedules yet but that's why we do different seminars in different cities around the world so we get to reach you wherever you are as well <clears throat> Daffodil Nation Mir, Mir, Mir Bueno uh, kailan yung next Stock Smarts in London? Meron. next Stock Smarts in London will be February 2019 so join the Stock Smarts London group so you get updated but it will be most likely February 2019 uh, to hog siya with we're gonna do Stock Smarts Germany Sabay so it will be our first seminar in Germany then Sabay na with Stock Smarts also in London uh, Charlton Te asking for MRC uh, Venner Donoso asking for Mac from Riyadh City Kingdom of Saudi Arabia Ival Demetra saying thank you Larry Gabat shout out from Israel uh, Marvin Dungao one of the best photographers in the country is joining us, Abigail Sulaiman. Andy Festin is asking for Bloom. Sige, let's... Madaming, madaming tatanang ng Bloom, ha? pero... Ah, mga stocks by request na rin to. Uh, Bloom is still bearish. Uh, all intents and purposes, the trend is pretty much down still. So even if you look at the charts here, you see that over here, you see the downward uh, progression of Bloom, no? So even price and momentum oscillators, uh, Bloom is still in a downturn. So Bloom, short, mid, long term, even the large candlestick today is denoting that the stock is uh, relatively bearish. So Bloom, no buy signal for quick traders, no buy signal for position traders, and no buy signal also for investors as of this point in time. Alright, so Eval de Matera, mm, what's my top five stock picks? Then you have George Pay, hello, hello George Pay from Airspeed. Uh, Bam Trial, paano mo ginagawa yung iti mo na nakaakit every other minute tulong naman idol, di ko alam eh normal na to uh, Ben Villarreal, ako rin uh, Marcel Valles, MPI just mentioned MPI, Francis Gomez asking for now just mentioned uh, now as well Julius Manalo, the effect of sana for the short term uh, it's hard to predict no? yung effect na uh, ng sona in terms of number one if you've been following my videos in the past uh, my style is ano 
I don't like to forecast, I don't like to predict, and I don't like to uh, anticipate what will happen. But here's what I know. If whatever gets said is favorable for the economy, whatever is said, something favorable to investors, especially foreign investors, uh, you can expect possibly more buying. What will happen, especially now, no, if you're seeing it, foreigners have been pulling out still, which is okay, which is normal, which happens from time to time. However, uh, if the sauna does not produce something that's, I don't know, uh, for foreigners to something that's appealing, it's harder for them to actually put in the money because they're, the only reason why I think people started buying below 7,000 was because of valuations. Below 7,000, the market was cheaper. And above and beyond that, uh, there's nothing still compelling to push investors to buy it at a higher price. So uh, rest assured, they'll give you an update on what's happening in the markets once we get uh, the update already, once we get uh, a notion of what's happening in the markets by that point in time. Then. Comcord, Bulusan from Makati, hello to you, Andre Silver, uh, JGS and DRN, Comcord, Bulusan also asking for uh, MPI, CHP, and MBT, Rainer, Fontanilla, TBGI, I think I mentioned TBGI already, uh, Ian Savior from Batangas, hello to you, uh, Jason Law, the man, the myth, the legend, hello to you, uh, Ben Ali Tolentino, what's your thoughts on Teles area? When this gets uploaded, no, just check it out, uh, I've already uh, mentioned my I guess my thoughts about the te uh, about the telecos area and what uh, what will be the effect on all of this in the grand scheme of things and and at the end of the day the please remember this the entire telco sector is maturing the only upside that we will see from there is three uh, LTE 4G um, mobile broadband or also uh, broadband um, more people I think over the next few years will be will be using data and I think that's the only upside that we will see from that but if you're watching it very well the globe is pretty much locking in customers already to two-year contracts so even if you have a third telco in the next year or the next few months a lot of the people have locked in their plans already so it will be harder to compel people to switch if they have to pay for uh, reconnection fees as well so there uh, next uh, June Rico asking for AC uh, I, in terms of valuations no I actually want it to be cheaper pa. if you're asking if it's cheaper expensive it's not yet at the point for me to look now it's super cheap yet Ayala Land though is another story somewhere around 36 Ayala Land is super cheap somewhere below 38 Ayala Land is super cheap so AC versus Ali head to head Ali for me I said is something that's more attractive to me valuation wise uh, Rich one fan Emilia BT Jape uh, Mares are we now on an upper in the PSE uh, not yet please remember this it's hard for uh, it's hard for trends to be broken but once it's established also it's hard for markets to get out of that area as well so meaning a stock that's in a downtrend will continue to be in a downtrend until we see a clear reversal as of this point in time there's no clear reversal yet uh, Rainier Fontanilla asking for now Ranians or now Palmer Salvador inside on the back and again in the street okay hmm uh, Metro Bank just disclosed good earnings. I just posted a video just now with Gus Kosho. Uh, while we were waiting for our flight, we discussed that Metro Bank uh, released second quarter uh, earnings, which are relatively uh, promising. So, here's one thing about the banking industry. Number one, interest rates have gone up. Interest rates have gone up, meaning uh, banks will generally make more from uh, fixed asset instruments. Uh, banks will make more because for you to take out a loan, you'll have to pay more as a bank. So this will add more to the bottom line uh, of the bank as well. So uh, from this interest rate, this interest rate hike, it will impact banks in a, in a sense that they will actually uh, get more and actually earn more. So something interesting from the banking industry, gaming industry, uh, some people are bullish about it, but I'm not a big fan of the gaming industry as a whole uh, with the aspect of the ones that are listed, RWM, Bloom, MRP, uh, they really haven't shown earnings that are predictable, they haven't really shown growth that is sustainable, and they haven't really shown earnings that, I don't know, 
yun, you see a specific growth rate per year. And ako, my style for fundamentals is this. Eh. I like companies where the earnings, I, I see it grow up. Because please remember this. Um, we don't we don't earn from its previous track record of earnings. We will only earn from what it could possibly be in the future. So what do I mean by this? It means that if you buy today, you're not just buying it based on what it is, but you are buying it based on what it could possibly be uh, in the future as well. So what does? Uh, you have Jalisa Manoso is also watching. Hello to you. Andre Silver asking for MPI. I've already included it in the previous video. So I hope for those who missed it, uh, I'll upload this video in both Facebook and YouTube. So I hope you guys get to see it there. Roy Amurao. <laughs> so, guys, uh, for those who've been following the YouTube videos, si Roy Amurao, siya yung rich friend natin. Sobrang yaman yun, guys. Next, Fidel Sevegan. <clears throat> Asking about the insight of JFC Ali Seb from the Holy Land, hoping to have stocks much I'm hoping to. I love Israel. Israel is such an amazing country. I love uh, food, the food there, and, and every part of Israel is just amazing. Um, I've talked about JFC and Ali in this video, so just backtrack na lang after this gets uploaded. I think the biggest problem of Cebu Pacific is not it's not because wala sa customers. They have a lot of customers. A lot of people are flying now. Uh, it's just that biggest problem is oil prices are high so meaning as oil prices are high they get hit by the spike of oil prices so please remember this oil um, airlines 50 percent of your costs are fuel related if uh, airlines also they've been buying fuel a few years back at around 30 us dollars a barrel now it's 72 so meaning their costs have more than doubled already so uh meaning it will shave their bottom line as well yeah so you have gerald salazar wants fb live more Japi maris say sir thank you for your videos fishman fontanilla thanks for the value of time roman solis god bless you always francis gomez asking for seb and ali roel canon hi sir roel here from stocks march 2018 hello to you yeah i remember i remember uh vance gomez asking for ore uh roel chris canon what's your take on bitcoin on Bitcoin trends or uh, here's the thing I posted last year that <clears throat> I wasn't a big fan of Bitcoin but after the hype was gone I started to invest early this year so if you look at the pre the videos I have uploaded in YouTube I reset the context of why I like Bitcoin and why I've been investing in it but, um, but also under the condition that I only place money uh, that uh, <clears throat> I'm willing to lose I also place money that uh, hanggang dun lang, I, if it goes to zero, I'm okay with it and I can live with it. Uh, Bitcoin, anywhere around 6,000 or well, if it bounces off of that, it's a good buy, similar to what you've, similar to what you've seen as well. So next, uh, Baby Jean Pat, FB Live is better, Chop, choppy po sa YouTube videos niya sir. Uh, what else? You have Tony Francisco. Asking for Ori and Web. Then you have Raymond asking for AT and an MRC. So let's look at uh, MRC first. Uh, <laughs> uh, MRC. Uh, you have a resistance at 0.62, you have a support at 0.56. So, breakout from 0.62 could possibly bring it to 0.68. Uh, if it fails to break, break out from 0.62, it could possibly retrace down to uh, 0.56. So, tradable range for MRC, 0.56 support, 0.62 resistance, fails to break out of 0.62, it can go down to 0.56, break out from 0.62, will bring it to 0.68 over the short term. So, please remember this, uh, it's a bit flat right now, no, there's not much movement for MRC for the short term. Uh, Kenneth Cubero, I mentioned now, uh, Anina, uh, Baby Jean, I've also mentioned. GFC, Joel Canyon, guys, what's your take on Bitcoin? Mentioned that also. Fafa asking for MAH, uh, Urgent Peñalosa, uh, nice to be back, asking for TBG and MRC. I answered that as well. Paul Linga, HBN, Fred Anthony for MBT, Gary De Guzman, uh, watching from KSA. I mentioned MPI as well in this video. Uh, Zo Cavaleda, I mentioned Seb. 
uh, Baby Jean Pat watching from Hong Kong. Hope to see you in Hong Kong. No? Uh, I think Hong Kong is next week na. So, uh, see you Friday for Stock Smarts Hong Kong. Or Saturday next week for Stock Smarts uh, Hong Kong as well. Rexy Flores, I mentioned MPI already. Baby Jean, they say things for the video. Lala season. Uh, ano po ang unang business sa learnings for them? Ah, gosh. First business. Um, if I remember it properly, probably more than 12 years ago, I started selling stuff. Uh, mga, uh, I did a lot. Eh. I even sold um, soft drinks at conferences. I started selling uh, some sachets no, na papapayat. I started doing it as a practice. I did a series of small businesses when I was a fresh grad from college while I was working. Not because I wanted to earn, but but mainly because I just wanted to really uh, learn the rudiments of business and learn to see as well uh, if I wanted it. Uh, and I guess here's the tip that I can give those that want to start. Uh, don't just go into business just to earn from it. Uh, focus first on how you can learn so that you, if you can see if you like it and you can see also if it's something that you can scale and if it's something that you can make profitable and have all of those three together boom that's when you all go out and go big go big into it as well so that's it uh, I'm a bit tired now no? it's uh, for those who are from the Philippines it's already 10 30 uh, the flight's a bit delayed so I don't know what time will be the boarding but uh, I think I need to rest for a bit na rin. Uh, but Sarah Sapo asking when will be the Japan trip. I, I did a seminar in Tokyo uh, last year. I, I don't know if I'll do one next year or this year again, but let's see uh, how it goes. Uh, Ceres, no, please let me know if there are a lot of people from your area that may be interested in it as well. Uh, then Ivy Jean Daen. Uh, Sir Marvin, tell us about how you do fundamental analysis. Sige. I... Mm, I've, uh, no, I've, I, I did a couple of videos uh, about it. It's in YouTube as well. Uh, I did a series of videos in YouTube talking about fundamental analysis. So if you want a reference on some of it, it's there as well. Uh, then Marceline Velez. Sir, you mentioned you're in the Romy Seminar. Yeah, meron, meron. I just finished a talk today. So I'm headed back tonight, back to Manila as well. Uh, but the next seminar for Stock Smarts in Davao will be this November naman. Uh, Roel Chris Canyon Sir Marvin is Bitcoin already broke from the downtrend Roel Bo from Canada Sige. I'll give you an updated video also uh, with the charts as well for Bitcoin but uh, I think 6,000 somewhere near 5,000 6,000 is a good support level for uh, Bitcoin as well uh, Ronnie Salcedo thank you for this video Pauline at very expensive ba ang HBN yeah it's very expensive uh, please remember this the only reason why it broke out uh, last January and February was because of the news uh, that there was something that will happen possibly to HVN, which is just a change in name from Golden Haven to Golden Bria. But as of this point in time, it's more expensive than uh, what it's actually earning. Rudolf Citra, hi sir, Gerard Miranda, hello, uh, Raymond, Raymond, sir, any advice on emotional, to control emotions and trading? Okay, I'll answer this then, we'll end the video with this uh, question. To answer that, no, Raymond, uh, you need to create mechanisms that uh, will force you not to follow your emotions. Meaning, what I mean by that? Number one, uh, if you say you will watch the market once a day, just watch it once a day. Do not log in more than that. If you say you will watch the market five times a day, you watch the market five times a day regardless kung down yung account niyo, down yung portfolio niyo. Nangyari na ba sa inyo? Down portfolio niyo. Ayaw niyo mag-lock in. Has that ever happened? So what this is telling you is if you, will, if you say you will watch it five times a day, regardless kung up your portfolio or down your portfolio, you will watch it five times a day. The problem is if you deviate from that, that's when emotions kick in na you, you say you'll only watch it twice pero biglang refresh ka na ng refresh. And that's where uh, more emotions will come in when you start deviating from that. That's why I create a checklist for those who read my books, uh, especially winning strategies for investing. I, 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 I would instruct you to make a checklist mechanism that you will only buy the stock when the conditions of those checklists are satisfied. And that checklist can be a combination of both technicals and fundamentals. So, ginagawa ko. Fundamentals, check, 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 check. Technicals, buy signal, check. 
check, 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 check. Then if I see everything that it's a check and it's compelling for me to buy, that's an important. Right? So uh I don't know if I'll be able to answer all of this right now, but I hope that you guys learned a lot from this session. Timmy Chua, sana po Sir Marvin, all Filipinos will learn how to invest in the market. Uh, that's my dream, that's my goal, that's why there are books, there are seminars, but there are videos like this because videos like this are free as well and will reach a lot of people. It will reach people who uh, don't attend seminars. This video is something that I do now. It's, it's tiring. I just came from a talk and I don't even uh, need to do this, but I do this because I love it. I do this because it's something that I love to do. I love uh, my biggest dream is to change the narrative you know, that uh, we see more Filipinos financially free and I'll uh, just keep on doing this. I'll keep on doing this even for Tandaho. I'll do this over and over and over again. Lexi Flores, Salamat Sir Rudolf Citra. If there's a reversal in the PSC, will it Will 6,800 be possible, sir? Balik that, Rudolph. Reversals normally happen from breakouts, so it has to be breakouts upward. It has to be movement upward uh, from a certain resistance level. Uh, Ramon Aldes or Marvin, how can you actually see the stocks, whether it might touch that price or it might go down just by taking a singular dance from the chart? Uh, that's too fast. Balik that. Uh, I look at the charts, then, binab then binabangga ko siya, naka-open din yung brokerage as well. And I guess, uh, uh, Ano na siya, I've been doing this for quite some time, so parang some of it becomes automatic. And if you watch it daily, kasi, for example, you have a stock that's in this direction. Uh, it's been going down for, for weeks already. Day-to-day uh, -day movements is not strong enough to break that that perspective and there are some shortcut oscillators and indicators that will help you uh, give a firmer reading if the stock is bullish or bearish as well uh, you have Chida Adviento watching uh, Isame Malala from Saudi Arabia Johan uh, all of the stock for Johan Miranda all of the stocks that you're asking we've already talked about it as well uh, Randall Chongson is asking for a fan sign Noel Rubia Sir Marvin please advise lang top three or five companies for newbies with long-term goals um, Here's the thing, there's no such thing as top stocks. It has to be based on what your fundamentals dictate and it has to be based on the valuations that you've uh, put as well. Because if you base it on valuations, you're buying something based on your timeline. Please, please remember this, for example, uh, I'm 34 years old. Then you have someone who's older who has a, who's probably 54. He want that guy who's 54 years old wants to invest for six years. Me at 34 say I want to invest for 26 years. So what's the difference? My buy signals will be different from someone who is 54 years old, and my buy signals also will be different from someone who has a much much longer timeline than me as well. So it's not just based on timeline, but it's based on what parameters, based on fundamentals and technicals will satisfy you to buy. But not just buy, but will satisfy or will cause you and trigger you to also sell later as well. So I guess that's it. Uh, there's a lot of questions, but, but I'm not sure if I'm able to answer all of them. Uh, but I'll try to make another video uh, from the plane. I'll just rest a bit, but your videos of plane will be a canned video already, will be on YouTube. Uh, if you guys are enjoying uh, Facebook lives like this, uh, please let me know, send me some love, uh, give me some comments if what kind of videos would you want some more. I'm trying to spice things up, make things different as well. Give me suggestions for Facebook Live and give me suggestions also for YouTube. And uh, give me suggestions also if you want me to interview different perspectives in the market from different people as well. Uh, we'll, we'll actually do it and we'll try to talk more about it um, for you guys. So that's it. Uh, next set of events, Hong Kong next week. After Hong Kong, we have Manila, September. Then after that, some of the Qatar, Singapore, uh, Dubai. Uh, over the next, over the next few weeks as well. So that's it. Uh, I think I'll have to rest a bit before I go in for my flight. My voice is kind of winning down. Thank you so much, guys, for being part of this Facebook Live session. It's always truly an honor uh, that you guys are joining us and listening to this video as well. So. This is Marvin Germo uh, from the Vow City. I hope this video helps you. Trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon, guys. God bless you.